Camden is here to help me today and we are hiding in the back of our house in my room because it is a disaster very, out there. It's a disaster out there. <laughs> it's a very rainy, dreary day at our house, which means everybody is inside playing games, including the dog. Mm. So here we are. I bet it's probably a rainy, dreary day at your house too. But that's okay. We have a great story that we're going to share today. Today is the first day of Holy Week, which is the week that gets us ready and leads us up to Easter. Camden, what is today, the first day of Holy Week? It's called Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. So if you'll remember, we have been going through and we have been studying stories about Jesus' life and his ministry from the time he was born. We started at Christmas time with Jesus being born. In the last several months, we've been talking about his life here on earth and the miracles that he performed um, and all of the different things that he did. And so today is when he and his disciples make their way into Jerusalem. So Camden, do you want to tell us the story about mm -hmm. Palm Sunday? They were out in the desert of Jerusalem. They weren't in a normal town. Mm -hmm. They were in the desert. And Jesus asked two of his disciples to get him a donkey. Why would he need a donkey? Well, it was in, everybody was excited when they they rode into Jerusalem from with Jesus on that donkey. But it wasn't like a usual walk. It was more of like rowing coats and like waving a, like palm a, leaves. Like a big old party. He was yeah. like their king. Mm -hmm. Now I have to ask you, Camden, does a king usually ride on a donkey? No. What does a king usually ride on? Camel or sure, um, horse like a like a stallion. Or sometimes elephants. Or sometimes elephants. That's true. In Asia, they would ride. Um, in Egypt, they would camels. And then a Asia, they would ride on elephants. On different places around the world. So God's people had been waiting and waiting and waiting for their king. And we talked about this at Christmas time that. Um, that God's people have been waiting for hundreds of years. Their prophets have been telling them that they were going to have a king. Years. That's right. And so they had been waiting because they'd had they'd had other nations warring against them, battling against them, and they wanted a king that would fight for them. And so when Jesus was born as a baby, that was surprising and not what they expected. And then here he is riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, showing how humble he was. So they waved their coats, and what did they do with their coats? They took it off and put on the ground, and waving palm leaves and putting palm leaves on the ground because he was their king. They don't want That's the right. baby donkey to ride onto the dirt and dust. That's right. So they made a place for him to walk, and they they yelled, and they waved their palm branches, and they basically had a big parade, party. a big party for Jesus coming into Jerusalem. And what did they say when they were singing? Hosanna, Hosanna in the Hosanna. highest. That's right. That's what they were singing. They were praising God for sending Jesus to them, sending them their king. Um, now, like we just said, he was not the king that they expected, and he was not a king that was declaring battle and, and fighting. He actually said, you guys will remember last week, he said the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God, and the second greatest is to love your neighbor as yourself. So he came preaching love, not war. He came in on a on a, a lowly donkey instead of a instead of a stallion or a, a camel or an elephant or any of those things, right? He was humble. So we're gonna read another story today about later in um, Holy Week about Jesus as the humble servant king. And this is from my Jesus Storybook Bible, which you may have at your house. If you do, you guys can read this again as a family. Okay, so this is taking place at Passover, which was the feast the holiday that they celebrated to remember when God led his people out of Egypt, where they were being, um, where they were being harmed, where they were being uh, uh, oppressed and slaves, enslaved by um, the Egyptians. And so they would celebrate on Passover to remember that God rescued them from Egypt, that God led them out of Egypt and took care of his people. So it was Passover, the time when God's people remembered how God rescued them from being slaves in Egypt. Every year, they killed a lamb and ate it. The lamb died instead of us, they would say. But this Passover, God was getting ready for an even greater rescue. Jesus and his friends were having the Passover meal together in an upstairs room. 
that Jesus' friends were arguing. What about? They were arguing about stinky feet. Stinky feet? Yes, that's right. Stinky, stinky feet. <laughs> now, the thing about feet back then was that people didn't wear shoes. They only wore sandals, which might not sound unusual, except that the streets in those days were dirty. And I don't mean you just don't. dusty dirty. I mean really stinky Ugh. dirty. With all those cows and horses everywhere, you can imagine the stuff that ended up on their feet. So anyway, someone had to wash away the dirt, but it was a dreadful job. Who on earth would ever dream about volunteering to do that? Only the lowliest servant. Look at all those nasty, stinky feet. I'm not the servant, Peter said. Nor am I, said Matthew. Quietly, Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, picked up a basin of water, knelt down, and started to wash his friend's feet. You can't, Peter said. He didn't understand about Jesus being the servant king. If you don't let me wash away the dirt, Peter, Jesus said, you can't be close to me. Jesus knew what people needed most was to be clean on the inside. No. All the dirt on their feet was nothing compared to the sin inside their hearts. Then wash me, Lord, Peter said, tears filling his eyes, all of me. One by one, Jesus washed everyone's feet. I'm doing this because I love you, Jesus explained. Do this for each other. Now, one of Jesus' friends had made a bad plan. No one else knew what the bad plan was, but Jesus knew, and so did Judas. Judas was going to help the leaders capture Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Go on, Jesus, Jesus said, go on, Judas, Jesus said, and Judas got up from the meal, left the room, and walked out into the night. Then Jesus picked up some bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends. He picked up a cup of wine and thanked God for it. He poured it out and shared it. Does this sound familiar? Like something we do every Sunday? My body is like this bread, it will break, Jesus told them. This cup of wine is like my blood, it will pour out. But this is how God will rescue the whole world. My life will break and God's broken world will mend. My heart will tear apart, and your hearts will be healed. Just as the Passover lamb died, so now I will die instead of you. My blood will wash away all of your sins, and you'll be clean on the inside, in your hearts. So whenever you eat and drink, remember, Jesus said, I have rescued you. Jesus knew it was nearly time for him to leave the world and go back to God. I won't be with you long, he said going to be very sad but God's helper will come and then you'll be filled up with a forever happiness that will never leave so don't be afraid you are my friends and I love you so they sang their favorite song and then they walked up to their favorite place the Olive Garden there's Jesus serving them the Passover meal so we're gonna stop this story there but I think you guys probably remember what happens next it was a very 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 sad day um, you know, they, they, they went to the garden to pray. The soldiers came and they took Jesus away and then they nailed Jesus to the cross and Jesus died and his disciples were very, very, very sad. Um, and we all feel that way sometimes. We all go through times that are very, very, very sad. Um, even right now with what we're going through, I have times when I'm feeling really happy and I'm feeling really glad. And then there are times when all of a sudden I just feel really sad about what's going on in our world. I feel really sad about not getting to see my friends. We all have that and that's okay. And God wants to hear us when we're happy and he wants to hear what's in our hearts when we feel sad. And so um, this week we're gonna do something. I want you to do something with your families this week as we're getting ready for Easter um, to help us remember that, to help us to talk to God um, and to share our hearts with him even if our hearts are really sad. So the way we're gonna do this, I'm gonna tell you a quick story about another Passover. So this was the last Passover um, that Jesus spent with his disciples. Well, three years before that, during the Passover celebration, when Jesus started his ministry, one of the first things that he did is he went into the temple and he got really mad. He walked in there and they were, basically had turned the temple into like a market and they were selling things and they were not using it as God's holy place. And he got really, really, really angry. Um, 
And after he knocked over the tables and, and told them how upset he was that they were not using God's house the way that it was supposed to be used, um, the Jews said to him, what sign will you show us for doing these things? And Jesus answered, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. What do you think he was talking about, Camden? Probably raise it up, I mean, like, maybe build another? Build a new temple? Or what else happened? What else was raised after three days? Easter. Yeah, that's right. When Jesus died, three days later, he rose again. So Jesus was saying, kind of giving him a hint about what was going to happen in a few years. Um but to help us remember that, we're going to talk about the, the temple. So years after Jesus died, the temple was destroyed. The actual physical building that was their church was destroyed. And to this day, there's one wall that remains from that temple, called the, and they call it the Wailing Wall, and it's still there. And Jews will travel from all over the world, and they will come, and they will write down prayers, and they'll leave them. They'll tuck them into the wall and leave them there as prayers to God. So, what I'm going to encourage you guys to do this week is to build a like, wall. Like out of Legos show us? or blocks. Yeah. And then you could put a structure at the bottom and stand it up. Yes. Camden like, made a, a, some feet on the bottom so that our wall can stand all week during Holy Week and not fall over. So, what you're going to do is you're going to get little square pieces of paper. Yeah, make sure they're square. We took computer paper. We just happened to have Easter colors of computer paper that we cut into squares. And it it, it has to be square because there's We're going to do something with it next week. That's right. So what you're going to do, you're going to write your prayers on it, like the wailing wall. So this is going to be a wailing wall, and you're going to tuck it into the bricks. You could also, if you have Maybe trouble like tucking Jenga. it. Oh, that's your Jenga would work. Jay if you can't, if you can't tuck it into the bricks, you could also just put it under your wall, and you could keep them maybe in your dining room or somewhere in your house where you guys will see them throughout the week. You can write down prayers, and put the put the paper under your wall or tuck it into your wall. And you're right, you could use Jenga. You could use if you have wooden blocks, you could use wooden blocks, um, Lincoln logs. I mean, whatever you have to build with to make a wall that during that week. And as we think about the Wailing Wall, as we think about the temple in Jerusalem that was destroyed, it can also remind us about Jesus, that Jesus went and died on the cross. And that's what we're remembering this week during Holy Week. Um, and then next week we're going to do something special. We're going to see you right back here in the video to teach you something that we can do with our prayers next week in honor of Easter. And I'll give you a hint. <laughs> it might well, look like... something like this. Okay, so that's why you have to have a square. So that's what we're going to do. So this week, take your prayers to God, whatever they are. It can be happy prayers. It can be sad prayers. God wants to hear all of it. And so make a wall that you can put your prayers with this week. Um, and with that, Camden, do you want to say a prayer for us as we close out our kids' sure. church time? Thanks, bud. I pray for everybody that will watch this video and everybody that does and has it is feeling well and going to have a good time either throughout the week or on Easter that we can celebrate you that we have food to feed us and a roof over our heads thank you that we can have this time to see our friends through the computer thank you Lord oh, amen. amen thanks for helping me today Camden happy Palm Sunday everybody we'll see you soon